friend Phil Crabb, fellow drummer. Welcome back to episode three of Bullet and Banter. Thanks for watching with a measure of patience as I get my method tightened up a bit for the project. So apologies in advance for a certain amount of imperfect audio and a few wobbly camera angles. So here we go for another little journey out on my Royal Enfield Bullet. to be visiting drummer and friend Phil Crabb, who I'm also very thankful to for being a guinea pig with the project. Phil and I get talking about Charlie Watts and about the time Phil met legendary drummer Buddy Rich. Phil is also a great drummer and in my mind one of the many unsung heroes of the UK music industry and has too enjoyed some great gigs along the way playing for artists like Gloria Gaynor, Beverly Knight, Joss Stone, one of my all-time favourites, Mavis Staples. It doesn't get old looking at the South Downs, really, especially on a beautiful day like this. Coming over those hills, absolutely gorgeous. I just got the camera back over to the handlebar mount, and uh, <laughs> the bullet's really testing the GoPro's ability to stabilise. So let's see what this footage is going to look like. Is it camera's wobbling around like that. Here we go. So we'll soon be arriving in the pretty coastal town of Eastbourne. Before the ride out, I did have a quick look at its history. Eastbourne boasts Europe's largest man-made marina at Sovereign Harbour, opened in 1993. Despite the town being little more than the size of the village up until the late 19th century. I'll come down here to Eastbourne. So very many times. For me, the town holds a great many memories doing sessions at the famous ICC Studios. Aha! Aha! I want to introduce you to a proper working drummer, not just somebody who can play a hundred million. Can you play fast, by the way? Uh, yeah, well, I haven't got my hand in a splint. Oh. What, what did you do? I, um, <laughs> one of the sticks fell off the floor top. So I leant over like so to pick it up and lost my balance and fell on my thumb. Oh dear. Shall we go and get some coffee and cake? I can comfort you. With, with sugar, with happy. With sugar. <laughs> and everywhere I've looked around Phil's house, there seems to be another pile of drums. But I couldn't help noticing he's hidden away the tambourines too. <laughs> Is that for some of the students that don't work out so well or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I use this for them. <laughs> Isn't that the beauty of drums? It's basically the last bastion of Anglo-Saxon violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Phil doesn't really want me to, to take him on the back of Edna for coffee. Yeah, only because I don't want to tempt Providence and break the other wrist. <laughs> I remember Phil coming down to ICC Studios back in the early 80s. Is it here? Are we here? We're at Nelson Coffee. I think this is looking good. And I brought us some big bottle of medicine. Yeah, is that um, medicine water? Hydrochloric acid or something. <laughs> we were talking about surviving as a musician these days and be not just good on our instrument, but also able to self-produce, film and edit everything that we do. There was nothing like that, was there? No. I mean, it was just a record player. And you, you know, if you had a camera, it was like, you bought a roll of film with 35 mil pictures, film, yeah. and they never came out anywhere. <laughs> they were always rubbish. They were on but my they camera. Did. 
<laughs> Yours were cute. Except the one that somebody took, used my camera for, photographed me with Buddy Rich in New York City in 1976. You're kidding. No, it was, it was amazing. Have you got that picture? I've got a picture of me like this, arm around the king, yeah. drums. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just, because I was in the Royal Marines band then, and we just sailed it to New York for the uh, for the bicentennial July 4th celebration. What year was that? 76. 76. So, um, so we marched down Broadway with all this ticket tape and it was just unbelievable. We found out that Buddy Rich's band was playing outside the Bank of America's on Fifth, Fifth Avenue. So we all piled down there and watched it and I was 18 I think at the time and I just jaw hit the floor just seeing yeah of course my, they pulled me forward and said uh, said to buddy uh, this is our drummer phil and he he was, he was so so nice you know yeah. and he said hey hey phil good to meet you get, and he shouted to his ready get the guy a pair of sticks so he passed the drum sticks he'd just done west side story you know the big drum feature with and I was just on cloud, sort of drum cloud. So you, have you still got those sticks? I've still got those sticks, you've, yeah. You've got a pair of Buddy Rich's drum yeah. sticks. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Look at that. So I have actually got apricot and pistachio frangipani. Cheers, by the way. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. 1976 was the year I left school. So I went to see uh, Leonard Skinner, oh, wow. the Rolling Stones, 10cc at Nebworth House Festival, Rock Festival. And th those were the bands that would have been significant influence for me. The Charlie Watts. And... Oh, it was probably great. He came over as such a, a gent and um, more serious about the instrument than you'd ever think. Well, do you know, I think you hit on something there with someone like Charlie Watts because Charlie was like a Royal Enfield bullet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he didn't go super fast. It, it didn't compete with the world of competitive drumming, did it? You know, I mean, put Charlie and Buddy together. What do you think? I don't know whether he would have respected him or not, or whether he would have. I think Buddy would have done actually. Probably did because what he hated was phonies. But the thing about Charlie was he was just the genuine article. And you can hear it in his play. It's organic, it's real, and it sort of hits you there. Mmm, delish. <laughs> Don't choke on it, mate. <laughs> you started drumming at a very early age, didn't you? And was it? I did, but I started off on classical guitar. And I learned from um, a peripatetic guitar teacher that came to my school. And where did you grow up? Rugby. Oh, Not far from you, actually. No, I'd, I'd forgotten that. Mm. Well, I think I'd, I'd had an interest in drums, but my parents would, didn't want drums in the house, so they didn't, uh, they didn't really support me in that quest initially. They did later on when they knew I was, you know, serious about it. I started doing a part-time job at a, working in a fishing tackle shop and um, saved up the money. And a friend of mine, a school friend of mine, uh, his dad used to play drums in a, in a dance band in the 40s, you know, World War II. And he was getting rid of the kit. And I said, asked him how much he wanted for it. I can't remember what it was. It's probably a couple of quid or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it had a mural on it, like an all-painted mural on the front. Beautiful. And I still remember the sound of that drum. It was just awesome. It's funny how you, get, you, you connect with those early instruments. Yes. You said about the sound of that bass drum. And it's funny how you can remember the sound. Mm. Last time I saw you, you invited me to go and see the wear of Mr. Baker, showing in Lewis. Oh, but extraordinarily, Ginger himself was there. Was there. To um, uh, take a question and answer seminar at the end of the film. It was March 2019. We got to see Ginger in the flesh, and then, of course, in October, Ginger passed. Didn't yeah. He? When he walked out, yeah, it, it wasn't that easy for him, was no, it? No, no. But you see, Ginger was a big influence on me as a young guy. How was it? And I remember just knowing something was different, really yeah. different about it. Yeah. I mean, you you've got to know that for musicians, you're. Your formative experiences come out in your sound, don't they? I think they do, yeah. That's an interesting topic. Anyway, <laughs> I. <laughs>
<laughs> we're going deep. deep. We're going deep, deep down. But we lose deep down. How are we doing for time? Should we head back? We can do. Yeah. Back at Chez Moi. That was really nice coffee and hang time. Before I go. Can I see if you can play along to Edna? Uh, in what way? When I start her up. Yeah. Do we go and find out? Okay. This was one of those moments where I'd accidentally switched the GoPro to warp speed, so unfortunately I couldn't give you it in real time. Phil was such a good sport, letting me come and try out my project with him. As I took the road home, reflecting on a great day out, and conscious of the incredible scenery around me, I remembered that I had come across a poem by Rudyard Kipling, called The Run of the Downs, and it opens like this. The weald is good, the downs are best, I'll give you the run of them east to west. enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join me on the next one.